low class. It's uh, number number nine online. It's ship structure, chapter 25, cargo access, handling and restraint. Number 20, uh, number, number nine. And we're going to spend most of the time talking about cargo access and cargo handling. And in particular, I'll just flip up to this. Here we've got the Maersk wave. Um, and we're going to talk about row row ships and we'll talk about stern and bow and side access to a row row but just to kind of get your head around it a little bit that's what we are talking about and as we continue on once again like i said chapter 25 so here we go it is cargo access handling and restraint and we'll flip through here we're talking uh, stern doors and stern ramps yeah i did say stern doors and stern ramps and we'll go through that and we'll cover the material in the book so let's uh let's see here number 25 is the uh, chapter that we're in it's going to be stern uh, stern ramps and doors and we'll talk about that we're going to talk about bow ramps and doors and then we're going to talk about something called side parts and side parts can be kind of interesting and they have a couple of different features of what they might be used for um, a lot of this has I'm just going to put this here watertight wt and uh, watertight what well the what is watertight integrity so we you are whenever you're going to breach the side of the hull you want to be thinking about watertight integrity so we'll be talking about that as well let's see well i've got this nice uh drawing here we'll get this opened up and uh here it is another classic captain teal uh have a cup of coffee in the morning going to draw a picture of a very, very different ship. So what we have here is we've got a row row ship and it's out in the middle of the ocean and it's going along kind of a funny looking ship. But let's see, we've got a couple of different things here. Uh, one of the things I noticed, okay, here's the wheelhouse and um, it's sitting pretty high in the water. There's some openings here that we'll talk about. There's something back here. And by the way, that's the stern ramp. And up here, there's going to be something uh, where there's going to be a bow opening and there's going to be a bow ramp. What do you want to talk about first? I kind of want to talk about the bow ramp first. You know, what, what type of, uh, what, what type of vehicles or what type, what type of stuff goes in this ship? Uh, well, we just, we get, um, the category of row row. And that's a little bit of, little different than a car carrier. Um, and let me take a moment to, to uh, kind of explain that. If this ship was divided into a very, very narrow decks, and I may have men mentioned this in class previously, but if we have a ship and it is divided into, you know, it's a, it's a big row row ship. And if the decks are very, very close together like this, I'm not sure that we can, yeah, I think you can see that. I'll make them a little bit bolder. But if the decks are very, very close together, got it? No, you can't see that. That blue, I'm going to, I'm going to do it this way. Here's the row, row ship. There's the bow. Here's the stern. And if the decks are very, very close together, obviously they'd be a lot. In other words, they're just big enough to put a car in there and another car. But that's all that fits in that, are those cars. And there's cars here, 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 here. If you are, that's a car carrier. Very, very gen, uh, generic, I know. You got the same ship. It's a row, row ship. Let's start that one again. I don't know what happened there. So um, here we've got a row row ship and uh, comes up like this. 
And if the deck spaces are larger so that I could get a tractor trailer in there, If I could get something like that in there, I don't know if that's going to be big enough for you to see, but if there is the big tractor trailer truck, you notice that the space between the decks is going to be uh, quite a bit different. So a row row, yeah, a row row can carry cars, but there'd be an awful lot of wasted space. And uh, the differences between uh, really shallow or uh, not so high, the deck separation and larger deck separations. So a row row and a car carrier. A row row could carry cars, but a car carrier could not carry semi-trailer trucks. I just uh, stepped on Steve Cole's, Captain Cole's uh, lectures or somebody's lectures about cargo, I'm sure, but you'll have to forgive me. Hmm. Watch this. So sometimes these ships are loaded at the dock. And isn't this clever here, huh? So look what we got. What have I done? Uh, let me come over here to the pointer. And I'll come over here. And we have now, we've opened up the bow of the ship. And we have an access to the bow of the ship. There's a ramp that would probably, in this case, would probably be a shore-based ramp. Here's the dock. The ship is, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be bow in. It could be alongside the berth. And this dock could could jut out a little bit at the bow, could be different configurations. Now, I want you to notice something else here. I'm going to have to get my pen back, but there is a watertight door inside this structure that flips up. You know, this bow structure that flips up, it was down here like this. Now it's sitting here like this. It's gotten out of the way, hydraulically controlled. And inside there, right here, is a large watertight door. And that watertight door also hinges up. And so it goes into this position here. And I'll just put it in dotted lines. It goes from here up to here. That's a watertight door. It's going to be gasketed. It's going to be sealed. It's going to be able to be dogged down. Probably with, uh, it's going to have a door as large as that. It's probably going to be uh, not manually dogged down like you're familiar with, but hydraulically operated dogs that would close uh, simultaneously to provide uh, the most uh, protection there. So that's what happens there. If you had that type of arrangement where that was the, the operation. Now, let's go to the stern of the ship. We have a row row ship, similar row row ship, if not the same. And we've got some, some, uh, operation up here. And you can see, let's see, he, this structure is the ramp. It's not the door. It's the ramp. The door would be inside here. And by the way, the door would flip up just like it did in the bow situation. It would go like that. And then on the inside, there would be decks and so on and so forth. And there's even ramps that go down one deck and then down another deck so that they can get around. So this is probably a row row made, made to carry larger vehicles just than just cars. This ramp, you see there's a tower here and the, um, and there is wire rope that goes back and forth. And this is a block and tackle system. And that is how you raise and lower the ramp. So let's do the magic here. And I'll do this. And I'll connect the dots there. So now there's the ramp in the lowered position. And now the block and tackle have extended out. And they've lowered the ramp down to the dock. Let's bring the water over here so that we can imagine what we got going on here. All right. By the way, so let's see, we got stuff happening at the bow, which is talked about. We've got stuff happening at the stern, stern ramps and stern doors. Uh, and we also have, we also have side ports, both here and here. And that big side port uh, might actually be used for vehicular traffic, and I'll show you some pictures 
of real ships now. So keep that general discussion in mind. That was some pretty good drawing today. I have to give myself credit. Somebody give me credit. Grace, give me some credit here. She's just looking at me. She wants to go for a walk. By the way, um, we had an awful lot of snow last night. And in the background, you might hear, or you probably don't hear, but you might hear the generator going. And we picked, we're still out of power. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to publish this or when I'll be able to publish this, but I can at least record it on the generator. Well, again, here's that same picture, and you can see now with the with the Maersk ship, and here, uh, here is the stern door, which is coming down, or the stern ramp, I'm sorry, and you can see the uh, wire rope, and the winches would be located up top here, and the ramp is coming down. That ramp is probably, I can estimate, I see a person in a red jumpsuit or a bright orange jumpsuit there. That ramp is probably 100, 150 feet long. It's jointed. I would use the word articulated so that it's hinged at different points. There's probably a hinge here. I can definitely see a hinge at this area. I got another hinge at this area. And where it actually sits down and tails out onto the dock, there is another hinge there. These openings here, these dark openings that you see, these are where the lines are passed out. And you can actually see the lines coming down from here coming out through the chocks and coming down to the dock. So there is cargo space up above, but there has to be an area on the deck there so that we can work that area. All right, look at the smokestack over here. And you see that. Now, kind of focus on this the, the, the top. And this is These are kind of like masts. They're not very, they don't look like they're very high, but they're very high up on the ship, but that's because the ship is built quite tall. So just kind of keep an eye on there. Let's, let's go to the next ship. Now, this is um, uh, Valenis Lines, and uh, it's a Swedish company. And there's a number of ships which are flagged different different uh, ways, but you'll see, get a, get a nice view of the ship. It's not a real, real big ship. I know it looks big, but at first glance, I notice it's got kind of a small wheelhouse. Let's go back here first. There's those two towers that we talked about just in the previous slide. That's where the block and tackle. And you can just kind of get an idea that there might be a stern ramp down there, which is going to, and here, by the way, here's where the lines go out for the dock. Let's see, there's a smokestack there. Here's the bridge and the wheelhouse. The lifeboat's all up here. Now here, here is a side port. Here is a ramp. And you can see the semi-trapezoidal kind of skirt where it would drop down on the dock right here. And uh, this area would become a ramp. And if it was at the dock, it would flip down and would go to the dock. What do we got right here? Well, this is one of those great times in class where I'd, I'd really get you to think about that and get everybody's attention and say, everybody focus, everybody focus, look at this thing right here. That is the gangway, which has been flipped up, so it's inside the lines of the ship, but the, the uh, accommodation ladder, I should say, the accommodation ladder is right there. There is also a side port, which you can't quite see. A side port is a small, well, it's, it's, it's a watertight door close to the water line down there by the gangway so that people can get off that gangway. And one of the things that the side port would be used for down in that location somewhere would be for the pilot to come up when the harbor pilot comes or goes and joins the ship, steps off the pilot boat. I think you probably looked at videos like that if you haven't. And you know, Google Pilot Boat, and you're, you're, you'll want to see how that happens. Certainly on the training cruise, you'll be excited to see how that, that's, uh, that's good decky stuff. Okay, one last thing to think about. You see these things up here and here, they're green. There's not a set of them here. There's a couple of them back here, back here, all around the upper deck. What do you think those are? They're kind of a, a tube with a kind of mushroom top on them. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. What are those? Those are blowers. Or actually, they're ventilators. So they suck the air, the exhaust, the uh, vehicular motor vehicle exhaust of the tractor trailer trucks, the vehicles which are going in. There needs to be a lot of air exchange. So some of those are bringing air in, and those particular ones 
are venting the air out, is my understanding. Well, we also have something called, uh, this is, a, this is call, actually called a bow visor. When I showed you uh, in my drawing, and let's go back to my drawing for just a moment. So here was the, here was the bow opened up. This is called the bow, bow visor, like the visor on a ball cap, V-I-S-O-R. The visor has been flipped up into its upright position. Now let's go back to the picture. This is a vessel, uh, an interesting vessel, and I'm going to tell you towards the end of the lecture, I'm going to tell you something about this vessel here. Some of you may, may have already picked up on this and this word, the Estonia, but we'll get to that in just uh, uh, not too many minutes. But the Estonia had a bow visor, and you can see uh, it's in its upright position, and this is a vehicle deck in here. Now, this was a passenger car ferry. The Estonia, and here was the passenger quarters. It was a 24-hour or so trip across the uh, Baltic Sea from uh, uh, northbound and southbound from Germany. Um, I think it was from Germany over to, um, well, actually it would have been Estonia up to uh, uh, Finland, I think, I believe. So, um, you can see the bow visor. So like some we already talked about, and here's, the, we'll go to the next picture, and here's a couple of different view of a, a passenger car ferry, although this probably took, took some truck ferries, some commercial traffic as well. There was two stern ramps. Uh, something like these, much different than what you saw around the Maersk ship. But again, the application here is a little bit different. And notice that they fold up very nicely. They're probably all hydraulic as opposed to being, um, being uh, controlled by a block and tackle and wire rope. So there's all different possibilities. One of the things that you're going to see here, and I want to, uh, I want to kind of, I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to have a little bit of a better view. One of the things I want you to know for the uh, for the next test, uh, test number exam number three, is that. Stern ramps are known as a quarter ramp, and you know this when you you know think about the word the quarter. Remember we learned about lookouts. We reported uh, sightings for a lookout, so many points um, uh, on the port quarter or on the starboard quarter. That's that corner of the ship, and you can see how on this particular ship that I'm pointing at, it, it's a very very big, 45 almost 45 quarter degree angle. This is fixed. It only comes up and down this way. Now this ramp is a little bit smaller, but this is called a slewing ramp. And the slewing ramp can can be uh, pivoted to the port side, to the uh, port side, to the starboard side, or it could come back all the way straight back if the dock was uh, you know, situated like that. So this one can, is somewhat flexible. This ship with a quarter ramp, I don't think I've ever seen a row row ship with a quarter ramp ever in my entire life that wasn't landing on the, coming down and landing on the starboard side of the ship. Starboard side, the ship is tied up starboard tied, starboard side to the dock. And we just refer to that as starboard side two. How's the ship tying up? Starboard side two or port side two. To what? To the dock. And here, uh, something called a semi slewing ramp. Kind of obvious here. This one can come down this way and it can come this way to go straight astern. In that, uh, situation, we'd have to have a dock there that was, uh, you know, immediately astern of the uh, of the ship. Uh, a small uh, uh, coastal uh, ferry with row row capabilities, uh, probably while doing a lot of commercial traffic, probably not doing much of. Uh, Probably not doing much uh, passenger traffic, and we can get this to view here. I'll slide that over a little bit, and um, you can imagine it looks like it might be. Uh, it looks like yeah, I can see a German flag on it up there. I know one of you in the class talked about being through the Kiel Canal, and uh, tried to send me a video of that. I responded to you and said I don't have the right codec to watch that video. But you were in uh, uh, Germany, and you were in the Kiel Canal. That, that very well could have been in the port of Kiel that you saw something like this. 
Now, I'm going to move this picture here so that we can get uh, from the textbook, figure 25.3, uh, from the textbook. Let's see, this is a sort of a schematic of a uh, quarter ramp, as you can see. Pretty basic, but this is probably the most common one in its stowed position, and it's in an articulated position, and how it comes down. That's kind of like the, the picture we saw in the beginning, and then as it lands on the dock, and the, and the vehicular traffic starts. So not particularly complicated. I can tell you uh, one of our, uh, our friends and a student who graduated a few years ago, uh, she was a, a chief officer on a, a big Maersk row row ship, like you're seeing that uh, picture. And um, she would talk about how, uh, as the chief mate, she was the only one who was allowed to raise and lower that stern ramp. It was such a big deal that that had just to be done just perfectly and you could think to yourself well Captain Teal don't you just you know swing a lever and throw a switch and the winches work you know not not really it doesn't it was explained to me by uh, by the captain there now now she's a captain and um, he explained to me that that's not quite a quite the how it's not quite that simple you have to be very very careful if you jam that up all cargo operations stop so chief mate owned that ramp so to speak Here's a picture of the ramp coming down. I'll show you that kind of the, the bottom of it. And uh, you can see how the skirt kind of flares out here where it goes down where it lands on the dock. It's all kind of uh, ribbed so you, uh, vehicles have good traction. Let's come down this way and we'll look at it here and we can see how it's jointed here. There's the, the towers for the wire. And when somebody was doing this, that would be done. The control station was right up here in this area here. I suspect that's probably the chief mate right there uh, running that operation, overseeing that operation. Not the chief mate I was talking about, but very possible. Here's another row row ship, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than the, the other one with the similar similar looking. I don't, I can't pick out the flag on this one, but I do see this is a big one. There's a, this is sometimes called the garage deck. And so it would be go up under the house. It looks like it would carry passengers as well. How do I know that's a row row? Because it says row row right there. No, just kidding. So I think we've covered we've covered the uh, bow ramps, uh, stern doors, stern ramps, bow ramps, uh, uh, visors, the bow that opens up, some of those things. And uh, you can read about these in the text. This is a side port. And uh, this is one of the side parts and it's kind of interesting as you look at this you know so this part of it would be uh would be up on deck this would be the uh, probably the main deck of this ship and you see it's it's kind of you know when i look at this and i talk about it one of the things that i really think about if that's the main deck then that right here this area of the ship is what what strake is that the shear strike right and what did I tell you about the shear strike? I think I told all of you this in class, or you should have certainly read it. But it is a big deal. And basically, according to shipbuilding rules, classification society shipbuilding rules, you do not violate the shear strike with any cutouts, portholes, hatches. And here, it sure looks to me, but I can tell you if this is the case, it has been very, very structurally modified. It has been beefed up with probably doubler plates and tripler plates in order to pass muster or we can say pass an inspection. But if you go to this picture, now this is not the same operation, but it's the same tech, type of technique where a forklift truck could drive in, put something on this elevator here inside the opening, and then it could be raised and lowered. You can imagine that we can see different decks here. We've got a lower hold, we've got a twin deck an upper tween deck, and you can imagine how this would open and how they probably got that. I, I would imagine that that forklift could probably fit on that elevator or somehow could get around and get on different levels. I'm sure it is constructed like that. And I'll pick that out. So it's figure 24.5, side door hatch cover, and the side port conveying system. Well, that's a little bit hard to visualize until I show you this. Those are um, giant rolls of toilet paper. No, no, they're not. They're probably just giant rolls of paper that have yet to be completed. And it looks like they're kind of brown. You know, maybe they're going to part, be part of a cardboard box or something. 
but that's how paper are loaded. But there's a great picture, and I'll just show you. I'll bring it down a little bit. That's a great picture of a side port and a, a deck hatch all, all together. And you can see how that forklift has grippers to pick up those two. Looks like those are two rolls of uh, paper which are stacked on top of each other. And then you can imagine those sliding in and somebody, another forklift truck, grabbing them from the outside. We'll talk about this passenger ferry a little bit, and a little bit, a little bit kind of uh, different. And what you're looking at is uh, uh, Townsend uh, ferries. Uh, this is a ferry which went from um, from Europe over the English Channel, and it went to um, went over to uh, a port of Dover, I believe. And you can see the passengers on, but what it's kind of hard to see is that what we've got right here is that there's the doors there's the door and so they're very very different i want to switch back to the cam for just a minute so look at my hands here and uh, so this is the stern going this way this is the bow coming this way towards me and so here was the stern and these doors opened like this this is the top down view and this door where this would be the port door and it would open and it would open like this and then the vehicles would drive in. Here comes a here comes a vehicle driving in here. So the doors would open up, and the vehicle would drive into that space. And when they all loaded up, those doors are supposed to close. Now those are not necessarily the watertight doors. There may have been something behind. There may have been something behind those doors, which was the watertight door itself. We'll have to see about that. But that's how that happens. So there's those, and those are called clamshell doors. You think of a clam, how a clam opens up, there's a clamshell door. You can, it's kind of in the shadow, but that's how that would happen. Here's a, here's a drawing of the same ship, and we can kind of see, uh, the schematic of it. And, um, you can see, if you carefully look, there's some, you can see the cow, uh, cars and trucks are in there. We got passengers quarters, but that's where the clamshell doors were, were exactly kept. Now it's interesting. Look at this. Look at this uh, one. There's one, two. You can't see the third one, but there are three propellers back here on the stern. This is definitely the stern, by the way. There's also some um, active anti-roll fins that stick out of the ship. And those active, controlled, would respond to the list of the ship that was going across the English Channel. And of course, those that those are not, that's not a bilge keel. It is an active, motor-driven, electronically controlled, uh, anti-roll feature. It also had the ability to offload on the bow. Now notice, on the bow, there's only one propeller. There's only one propeller on the bow. And that would help uh, backing out when they, uh, this would, this, this particular ship, this ferry would pull directly into the slip, into the ferry, it's called the ferry pens, and it would put itself right in there, but when it was time to relieve, they could use that bow propeller to propel itself backwards uh, with a little bit more control. Okay. Now, unfortunately, that particular ship had a rather horrific accident. I'm going to show you another picture of another ship that had a bad accident too. And actually, it's the same one that we've already seen. Let me resize this picture a little bit. It was the Estonia. And there's a great picture. Well, sad, sad to report, the Estonia is now on, uh, on the seafloor. A tremendous loss of life. The Estonia is gone, and the passenger ferry known as the Herald of Free Enterprise, this one also suffered catastrophic uh, 
uh, problems. And it all had to do with the cargo deck. It all had to do with the fact that this particular deck could be opened up and it wasn't secured properly. I'm going to show you a slide or a little bit of a synopsis here and hopefully you can see it because I want you to have an appreciation. Now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, send you uh, the re as a required reading. I'm going to send you an attachment um, and I'll, I'll make sure it's pretty evident where it is and I expect you to read. All of you listen clearly. Attention everybody. Look at me. Everybody has to read. It's two typewritten pages. On one side it talks about the Herald of Free Enterprise and on the other side it talks about the Estonia. And I want you to know this. I'm going to ask you some questions and I'll have probably questions on the test as well. It's a simulation of that terrifying night. On the night of September 28th, 1994, here comes the ship. At 1 a.m., the Estonia is making 14 knots in a westerly course from Tallinn to Stockholm. Sure, so it's from Tallinn, Estonia to Stockholm. At 1 a.m., the Estonia's bow visor breaks off and it was in heavy seas. A strong influx of water, inflow of water into the vehicle deck causes the ship to list to starboard. That's only one minute later. You, middle of the night, think how horrific that is. One minute after that, 102, a turning maneuver intended to counteract the dangerous listing instead makes it worse going to the other side. Five minutes later, at 10.07 a.m., the list increases to 30 degrees. At 1.20 a.m., the list increases to 50. At 1.27, the ship turns onto its side and the vessel sinks. Again, I'm not going to take time to walk you through that, but I want you to read that report. There's a picture, an artist rendering of the Estonia on its side on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Horrific accident. You'll talk about this in other classes as well. What about the other one that was called the Herald of Free Enterprise? Now you talked about this one. This is what the ship looks like. All right? This is what the vessel looks like in real life. When things were good. And the clamshell doors are shut. You can see a vehicle up on deck. It's only going across the English Channel. This is a vessel which is 433 feet long. They went from the port of Calais, or Calais rather, I know I talk like a manor. It goes from the port of Calais on the European side across the English Channel to the port of Dover, the English port of Dover. And this is the Herald of Free Enterprise at the dock. We kind of saw this picture before. Very, very quickly, very, very quickly, this is the situation where what happened. It is sitting on the bottom. It didn't get far from the dock, thank God. It would have been worse if it was out further, but it happened so quickly. And I want you to notice there's something here. Those doors, those clamshell doors are open. They're not very far from the dock at all. They're basically, they're still in the harbor or the outer harbor. Those doors were still open. I'm going to ask you to think about that. Here's another view of it. Those doors are still open. This was during the recovery procedure. You can see salvage vessels uh, are in there. You can notice that the propeller that I talked about, this is the bow. You can see the wheel, wheelhouse there. And here's those extra propellers back on the stern. So I'm going to ask you some questions. And, and much like I did with the, uh, the uh, previous question, I'm going to ask you to kind of give me a synopsis of both of those, you know, I don't have to have a lot of detail, but I will ask you to write a synopsis. And um, I think I may even do that as part of a quiz this week. I think I'll do it in the form of a quiz. And I'll have you turn it in that way. You can type it and just do it as a quiz. So that's going to be kind of, I guess we'll say it's a pop quiz. I hope you're paying attention. I hope you're locked in and following me because that's what's coming. I'll put it up. I'll write that question today. And I'll leave it up uh, all through the weekend. I'll leave it up until, let's say, Monday night at midnight that you'll have to have that response. So I'm going to send you the paper. I'll send you the, uh, I'll send you the document. And then I'll, you'll be able to read that. 
and then um, feel free to look online and look more at that particular situation. And, um, so sorry to end on a sad note, but it's serious stuff. It all has to do with row row ships and side ports and uh, uh, bow openings and stirred openings. And as I said before, it's all about water type integrity. So I've been going on for quite a while. This is one of my longest lectures. It's 35, 36 minutes now. I'll say goodbye. And uh, you guys all have a good weekend. Bye-bye.